Alternating Current The electricity that we have been discussing thus far is electricity moving in one direction of direct current, DC. Now, let us examine alternating current, commonly called AC. If we disconnect the wire from the battery we previously had connected, and bring a permanent magnet near the unconnected wire, we will be able to re-induce electricity back in the wire, clearly demonstrating the relationship of electricity and magnetism. And because the body is full of axons carrying electricity, it is easy to see that magnetism applied externally will produce a definite effect on body function. Magnetism is found in abundance on the surface of the Earth due to the electricity of the planet itself. Anyone holding a compass can observe this. At night, when we sleep, our body recharges off the Earth's magnetism, thus reassuring plenty of electricity for the next day's activity. That is why many people sleep to the magnetic north for best sleeping efficiency. Another fact often overlooked is that the brain uses 80% of its energy while you sleep. It is very busy directing electricity to depleted areas, or batteries, in the body. Study the illustration forthcoming for a moment. Hello, my name is Relative Observer. You will see me through this publication. I was created out of necessity. Notice a smaller version of me looking at a stalk of corn. In position 1, I am viewing it from the top, and in position 2, the bottom. If I were two different people at two different times, two relative views from different perspectives, the same stalk of corn would appear different. But it would be the same corn. This happens when two scientists do the same experiment from different points of view. This is a common error in human judgment. People fail to compare viewpoints. So, I was created. Just look at the drawing from my viewpoint, and you will see the same as the artist. Many scientists today are realizing that the experiment and the experimenter are relative to one another, thus unlocking many hidden secrets normally missed by orthodox tradition. To the relative observer, he sees energy flowing away. Energy in a magnet flows from the north to the south pole. To the relative observer, it is moving away. The magnet is rotated 180 degrees, or placed upside down. Energy is still flowing north to south, but to the relative observer, it is moving towards him. Now we are ready for another form of electricity, called alternating current. Up until now, we have been studying electricity moving through a medium in one direction. In alternating electricity, the electrons move through the wire back and forth, much like waves in a bathtub. Electrons move through the wire to the right. When the north pole is up and the north pole moves away from the wire in a clockwise position, the movement slows down as the wires do, and the south pole comes close to the wire, reaching maximum velocity to the left as the south reaches the apex of its revolution. This is how alternating current is produced, and in diagram 14, you can see the magnetic wave front produced by the electrons as they change directions. If the generator rotated 360 degrees in one second, we would have a frequency of one cycle per second. The outside portion of the wave is called the envelope. Here, the north and south share the same envelope. As the magnet comes to the south, the wave reverses and goes into the other direction. Here, we are doubling the generator's speed, and two envelopes appear, where they are only half the size of the first one-cycle pattern. Here, we are at 10 cycles per second. Notice we are at one-tenth the original size. Now look at the size of the wave, not how many waves there are over a given distance. The size is determined by the voltage and the distance electricity will travel over a wire of infinite length, which is a product of the voltage times the current. To sum up this part of electricity, we find that by rotating a magnet we get alternating current, and the frequency measured, or cycles per second, is determined by the rate of rotation, and the distance the magnetism will travel is determined by the voltage and current, which are products of the strength of the magnets generating their fields. It may seem at times we are overemphasizing these basic principles, and may be over-illustrating them but it is important to visually understand them so that they become second nature whenever you view a light bulb, motor, another human being, or whatever. 
As the author in later chapters presents so many detailed universal principles, and in later books, universal complexities, you will be glad you took extra time in the early chapters.